How many here drink milk or consume dairy products? You know, cheese, yogurt, ice cream. Sure, there you go. We have more honest people. That's great. We all do, right? Sure. Now, why do you eat these things? Why do you drink milk and eat cheese and yogurt and ice cream? Well, aside from the taste, I guess, you've acquired some taste somewhere along the way. Um, there are generally two reasons, two reasons that we drink milk, two primary reasons, general reasons, categorical reasons. The first, reasons. the first reason is because dairy products are supposed to be healthy for us. That's the first reason. Why would you do it otherwise? Milk has calcium, builds strong bones, strong bodies. That's what we think. That's what we've been told. So we're going to spend 60 seconds or so looking at some hard facts about that. Milk and dairy, in addition to other animal products, actually build weak bones and weak bodies, not strong ones. Dairy products increase your risk of bone fracture. And they drop, along with other animal products, drop your immune response. They're upregulators of inflammation. They cause inflammation. The two countries in the world with the highest per capita rate of hip fracture due to osteoporosis or weak bones are Switzerland and the U.S., who also have the highest amount of milk consumption versus, say, a country like Nigeria, who eat very little animal products, almost no dairy, and they have the lowest amount of bone fractures in the world. Hmm. Why don't we know this? Think that's important? Well, it's because the meat and dairy industries are economically driven, aren't they? Sure they are. They're businesses. They're not health-driven. They're not educationally driven. They don't want you to know this. Milk and dairy products also increase your risk, as well as other animal products, of contracting various types of cancer. Prostate, breast, ovarian. Yes, they do. And milk and dairy products increase your risk of many other diseases, as does animal products. Heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, stroke, weight gain, allergies, congestion, Parkinson's disease. And milk contains numerous contaminants, hormones, pathogens, whether it's produced organically, grass-fed, local or not. Now, if that weren't enough, just put that aside. Pretend I didn't even say that, OK? 75% of the entire world population, 75% of everybody in the world, are lactose intolerant. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. I mean, our bodies aren't even really designed to digest milk. You know, there are nearly 5,000, just under 5,000 different types of mammals on Earth, all of which, by definition, produce milk for their own young. We humans are the only species on our planet to drink milk after we've been weaned. <laughs> I guess you could say we're a bunch of toddlers, right? <laughs> With diapers on. <laughs> and, and we're the only species of the 5,000 on our planet to drink milk from a completely different species mother. I mean, if you really look at that carefully, it's, you know, or not so carefully, it's just a bit bizarre. So you see, milk and dairy products aren't so good for us. They're not so good for our human health, but many people just don't want to believe this. In fact, I see a number of people in the audience doing this. Tell him to stop right now. <laughs> Get him out of here. I don't want him to come back. <laughs> All right. So for you who don't want to hear this, it, it's true. But for you who don't want to hear this, this becomes a very debatable topic, doesn't it? Yeah, because you don't want to hear it. It goes in here, it goes out there. So let's talk about something that isn't debatable at all, how unhealthy dairy products are for our environment. No debate. Producing milk or any animal product on a global basis is unsustainable. That's what I'm talking about tonight. It's absolutely terrible, disastrous for our planet. There's nothing to debate. It's the most resource inefficient food item that we humans produce today, and here's why. One dairy cow, just one dairy cow, and whether you measure this on your own dairy farms or not, it's true. On average, eats between 120 to 150 pounds of food each day, drinks 30 to 40 gallons of water each day, in addition to the other 2,000 gallons of water tied up in his food each day. Do you ever measure that? And one cow produces five tons of greenhouse gases in one year and generates 27 tons of manure in one year, one single cow. Now multiply that out, please. Multiply that out over the 3.5 million cows you have here just in your state of Wisconsin on your 69,000 family farms, and you have a mess. Here's what that mess looks like across our country. In Wisconsin, did you know that 40% of all your inland lakes and 25% of your well water is considered contaminated with cyanotoxins? Go look it up. And pollutants from dairy operations. Livestock in our country produce 7 million pounds of feces and urine per minute. Anybody catch that? So are you still doing this? <laughs> I don't want to hear this. <laughs> it's true. Seven million pounds every 60 seconds. Raising animals to eat 
and operating dairy farms in your state of Wisconsin creates as much untreated waste as 175 million people. That's 30 times more waste than what's produced by the entire human population in your state, and it's untreated. As I said, it's a mess. When it's all said and done, it took, on average, over 1,000 gallons of fresh, clean water to produce just one gallon of milk, created or required massive inefficient land use for all the cows and crops to feed them, contributed heavily to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change, created water and air pollution to then give us a product that's unhealthy for us to consume. And remember, if you didn't have your hands over your eyes when they showed you that, 75% of us humans can't even digest it. Now, along the way, there's unnecessary abuses, and I'm not here to talk about all those, but they're here. Whether, whether you want to believe them or not, they exist. The production of veal and, of course, all the slaughtering which is strongly defended by the industry. I understand why they do that. But we don't need to do it. And oh, don't forget about the, please, don't forget about the 400,000 pigs, almost a half a million pigs you're raising here in Wisconsin, that are factually smarter and more sensitive than most of the, most of the dogs and cats that we all have at home. I know this. <laughs> I know this from experience. And we can't leave them out of discussions or the turkeys or chickens. So to me, to me, it makes, looking at this for 40 years now, and in many countries, in the world. It makes little sense to continue doing what our great-grandparents did in the late 1800s and early 1900s when we didn't know any better. And there are far less mouths to feed and more land and water to do so. Do any of you still use typewriters? Still use typewriters? How about, how about, how about a feather quill pen? Use a feather quill pen? I bet you I got you there to, to create your messages. All right, well, do you guys tweet with your typewriters? Huh? There you go. No, of course not. How, many, how about the Pony Express <laughs> or the Stagecoach to send those messages or to travel? You think our internet's slow? <laughs> well, your great-grandparents did. And what about candles or kerosene lamps to read with at night or study by? Anybody out there use those? Well, why not? Why don't you use these things? I'll tell you why you don't use these things that we just talked about. It's because they're obsolete. That's why we've outgrown them. They're inefficient. They don't fit. And so it is, really, with all dairy and other animal products. The world, on a global basis, can no longer support the production of these things. Just like the typewriter, just like the Pony Express. We need to evolve past them, and we need to do it today. The clock is ticking. 